Hello, welcome. Uh, this is a new week of videos. Um, as you can see, there's n there's no like imagery behind me. Just some Blu-rays. I didn't really think that this week's videos would really don't really need like lots of imagery behind me. Uh, I'm not doing any big like um, thing like the favorite films where it's good to have like images from the films. No, I'm not doing that this week. So I feel like the world probably wasn't much point. The kind of videos I'm going to be making this week. Uh, this week is a bit quieter, probably not as long as some of the other weeks, last few weeks. Just because I've just done two larger videos about emotional films from like the 60s and 70s and emotional films from the silent 50s. They were both like an hour long each. <laughs> they were epic. So I'm not doing them this week. So I'm just doing shorter videos. Um, I would also say, just to start, a big uh, thank you to Daisuke Beppu for mentioning my channel um, on his on a video he did last this week actually, or as I'm filming this this week, but by the time you this, you'll see this will probably be last week. Uh, it's all very confusing. Um, uh, thank you Daisuke, that is great. Um, I've got some new subscribers, I hope you enjoy the show. Um, I do a variety of subjects. Some art house, some more um, genre focused. I, I try and go all over the place, so I go to various, I basically cover various countries from like Asia to the Eastern Europe to Nom to like America and Europe. So I try and cover as much as I can. Uh, I try and keep it, I try and kind of shift around and not have not be stuck to like one type of thing, so I was trying to be around. I've always, I tend to have a series going at the moment, I'm doing a rubber breast on season. I've got some other ones planned, so there's, there's always going to be new um, videos and different variety. I, I try and make sure I'm not just doing like three videos in a row and in one week, they the same thing. I try and kind of vary it. So if you don't like one thing, you might like something else. So that's the way I do it, and it makes it more interesting for me. So hopefully that's the introduction over. But again, thank you Daisuke for the mention and that great video. He was very kind in the video, very kind with me, very kind with the channel and what was on the channel. So um, very much appreciated. Um, I would also recommend Daisuke's channel if anyone here has not seen it. I'm sure most people on this channel have seen his channel. There's also a live stream coming up every um, Saturday night. If you're in Britain, it starts about 10 at night. And Daisuke does it from like, was it 5 or 6 in the morning Japan time. So it's, America has a different time as well because it's all, it's all going on live. They, they, they're a lot of fun. So I try and go on them. Hopefully I'll meet you there. Okay, so uh, now to the actual video. Um, this is the, um, this is part of my breast one season. Uh, this is a Diary of a Country Priest. Um, this is the last one I'm doing for a couple of weeks because I'm trying to do them in short bursts and then have a little break then do another few. So the last bunch will be um, some of his later films that will probably larger on as well. I've also got his first film that Bresson kind of, well, he didn't disown it but he more or less said it wasn't really his kind of film. It was one of those, I'm not sure he said it but it's been suggested it was not one of his kind of film. I'm still going to cover the film anyway. Right. So, hopefully that clears things up. So, Diary of Country Priest is one of the first pure brace on films. The first one with non actors where he started to perfect his stylization of. Well, actually, he did perfect it with this one film. He got the stylization down to uh, the basics. Everything's spare, nothing's thrown away. It's actually longer than m most of his later films. I mean, a lot of his other films come in from between 70 and 90 minutes. And this one's almost two hours. And it was, I was quite shocked when I realised how long it was. I always remember it being shorter. Like, I saw this film, um, I've seen this in the cinema. I'm not sure I've seen it twice in the cinema. Because um, I, I'm pretty sure I saw it at the Edinburgh Film Festival with other Breast on films. And I'm pretty sure I saw it in JFT as well. I can't quite remember. I mean, Breast on's an interesting director for me is, is that a lot of master directors, you're lucky if you see one or two of their films in the cinema. 
and that's it. You're just lucky because most of them were dead before you were born or they were on the way out when you were like a child really. A lot of the, the classic masters. Well I managed to catch a lot of breaths on in retrospectives. I was always seen to be around when I was doing retrospectives. Like I was in Edinburgh one year when I was doing a breast on retrospective. I think GFT did some breast on films too. So I've I've been kind of lucky with breast on. I've seen like most of the 50s and 60s films in the cinema. And so that I'm one of those people who when I went to VHS and DVD it was like they're really good films but they like the impact you get in the cinema because the cinema is so all encompassing. Uh, Diary of a Country Priest has that, we see it in uh, it's, uh, this one, it's just quick TV and the DVD, it's a region one DVD. But maybe less so in some of the other films, I think. Because it's still more tight in narrative than some of the other later films, which are more pared down and more pared down to basic situations. Like Mouchette had very simple situation they built and built and built and a lot of it was the atmosphere throughout the film. This one has more of a narrative tinge to it, but it's still pared down to the basics. It's still you feel you feel like he's pared down the story to as limited as it can be. It's just that the story's got more going on in it than some of the other films. Cause this one you have the story of the country priest and who's this young man who He's going to his first parish and he's learning the ropes. But he's very naive, he's very insular, he's he's a terrible diet and he's he's almost intent on punishing himself. Like he he's he seems to believe that mankind has inherent sin and the first person that punishes yourself. That's never stated, but that's from his actions, that's what you can surmise from him. So he's not worldly. Everyone points out he's not worldly. He's um, he's in this for God, basically. He's not in it for what some priests may be in it for is like the social status. I mean, when religion was at its height, it was a social thing as well. You could have a lot of power as a man of the cloth because it was a religious. Um, a lot of religious communities were very focused in church, and the priest was a very dominant part of life in a village. At this point, in the late forties, it's starting to change, and he's from this. This priest is a generation who's coming to churches who have less of a congregation. People don't come in as much anymore. People, this is just post-war. People are burnt out. They've just lived under occupation. They're all everyone's got their own problems, and the church just doesn't have the hold over people anymore. And this priest comes into the church is a very unworldly fellow. He just doesn't can't quite connect to the church. Um, or not the church can't connect to the people. Like he's good at one part, but the idea of communicating the idea of God to the people, he doesn't know how to do. He doesn't have the skills. He doesn't have the common sense. He doesn't have the warmth to other people to engage them and try and help them with their lives, it's all inner focused, it's all about the purity of the message and the message just seems to be aimed at him more than other people and he's trying to find a way beyond that and try and engage the people. So he's lots of theories but when he goes to try and get funding for it via the church or via people with money in the village, they're not interested. It's like, well it seems a good idea but you'll find the people in this uh, village is it's a snake pit, it's like everyone's bitter or avoid them. It's that kind of thing of, he's told, don't bother, just deal with your charts and that's it, don't bother. And, you know, that's what he's dealing with, he's dealing with a chart that's past this peak. So, your, your, gen, your actual um, focus of the story is this priest trying to find a way to to reach out to people and to bring what I've got to people. Uh, this was the breast on films of the 50s where there was still... It was... It was about God, it was about belief in a way that in the 60s onwards there was a Christian message but it wasn't so overt, it was actually much more about people's actions and how they 
exist in the world and how they either could exist or could not exist in the world. At this point, it was more, the, the subject matters is a priest, and you've got another film, this, uh, Man Escapes, is about a guy escaping from prison, which is very has a very kind of holistic feel to it. Pickpocket is the same as even what's about criminal is it's still very stripped down as if he can always be a man of the cloth how stripped down he is, even though his intent is different. But still the idea of the soul trying to find redemption within a very difficult situation, an attempt to escape from you know, your life or from your physical existence. In this one, he's trying he's not trying to escape, but he's trying to escape from himself. But he's not trying to escape from his location. But he's um he's trying to escape from the prison he's made of his life of his belief, his sort of focus on tight onto this one bit of this narrow focus. And you could see it's a it's very much a limitation. I mean one of the priests in the film actually says uh he complains about people from his this country priest generation saying like these are all kind of young boys basically, you're not really men, you're just sensitive and a lot of these just quit and it's you just you just don't know how to hack it as a priest. Because all these priests that he, he runs into are actually like, they're more practical, they're aware of what people are and they try and reach them through practical means, they, they know when it's a, when someone's a bad cause, we just avoid, it's a, just avoid because you're never going to reach them anyway. They're like much more like sort of holding on to the congregation and getting as many people as they can. Is it cynical or is it not? I mean, the film doesn't answer that question. In some ways you can say, okay, but he's a bit more cynical about people, some of these older priests. But they get them in, they actually get them connecting with the religion. I mean, this young priest can. He's more pure, but no one around him is engaged by him. He's quiet, he doesn't, he doesn't get people to connect with his words. A lot of them think he's weak, a lot of them think he's a drunk. Everyone knows he looks awful because he's... His um, diet is basically wine, like bad wine, and stale bread, and he's almost punished himself. And it's the selfishness of that act is something that's obviously a problem. It obviously stubs a lot of people, but a lot, even the priests, around about the older priests, just like, well, it's your parish, do what you need to do, but they're kind of stubbed by him and stubbed by his so focused belief. But, but his lack of sort of emotional intelligence and his lack of um, maturity. But as the film goes on, he does try and connect with people. I mean, he's he, he has to deal with the count, who's a rich guy in the neighbourhood, who's got the money and who he's trying to get some money from to do up certain parts of the church. He has to deal with him. He ends up back because this count, his family's lost a child, the mother is stuck in grief and uh, the father's um, having an affair with the um, the woman who's teaching his daughter the daughter's come across as someone who's actually very damaged and just caught a demon by some people she's manipulative and she's a lot of people think she's evil but this film doesn't go for easy categories people are damaged you know, some people it might be hard for you to figure out how to help them, but they are damaged. There's, there are problems that um, it would take a lot of help, to, a lot of work to sort. And that's where the priest actually has more success. The fact that he won't give up on anybody, even if he's told stay away from them, they're bad news. Like he does. Uh, the woman whose childhood died, she has become bitter about God, she has found she hates God basically and he's the person, the priest by arguing with her is the person who actually gets her back with her faith. He does, in some ways he does find a way to connect with the daughter who's called a demon even though he's not going to change her way, she's, she's in a self-destructive streak but he has shown her some humanity, some decency that may pay off down the line in her life. It's not because everyone else in her life is treating her like she's just a kid 
they don't see how manipulative she is and they don't also don't see how much help she needs and how damaged she is. No one's going to put the effort in. He does and he takes a lot of abuse for her but he still keeps going. And there's this other little girl who in the village who's teased him and spread rumours about him. But even when, um, but then uh, when he's in need, she helps him and she apologises for what she's done because it's obviously a person who's made mistakes. And he doesn't take that against her. So does so you start out with someone who seems very naive, but as the film goes on and as he talks to people and interacts with people, and there's other other professionals as well he interacts with. You get a sense of he's this isolated figure, but because he's a, a sexual decency to him, and does that, that is important as well. And as you see him within his environment, and everything's stripped down, and how he doesn't bring in for himself, he's almost a nothing in the equation. He's trying to bring people closer to God, that it becomes a very moving film. Even if you're not a if you're like me, you're not really a believer. It's still a really interesting film about belief and what people, why people need belief, and why it affects them, and how it can torture them as well. Because if you come up to a society that's was well, a big belief society, like this one was, then the beliefs start to fall away. It's like how do you navigate and how do you of that belief start to go? And you've still got the same problems that generations before have had. It's like, where's your arbiter of um, advice when you can't really rely on your friends because a lot of the advice is shallow. It's like, what do you do? And, and the downside for some of these older priests are they're in for the masses, they're not in it for the individuals. And this priest's in it for the individual, but he's bad to the masses. So it's like, it's complicated. It's not like there's, this is the, the be on end or this is the best way to deal with it. It's like, it doesn't go into that kind of attitude, it's like, this is a situation. And this priest, the country priest, is very flawed. He's a very self-destructive character. He's, um, his diet ended up causing him to develop cancer because, and stomach cancer, because he's been taught himself so much, he's obviously, he didn't, he believes he doesn't deserve to live. He ends up destroying his body. And it's like, you know, it's like, it's, it's almost a self-willed. self, -will, self -willed. Like he can't survive, it's almost like in some ways he become a priest because he can't survive humanity and people are, he calls these people a mystery to him. It's almost like he needs to be gone from them. So he can criticise other people and he can challenge other people and help them and he can suffer for them. Because he's a very Christ-like <laughs> complex, he's a, very, he's a Christ complex going with him. Like he finds meaning in the story of Christ and the suffering and he is trying to work it out almost for the film, but of course he has to be modest and not be aware of that at the same time because you can't really try and be Christ either. So he's a very he's got a very complex um, set of problems that no one around him is really prepared to deal with. It's like the existential, the existential crisis of post-war France, where you get people like Janine. I mean, it was like that, suddenly hitting the um, priesthood and no one knows how to deal with it. So people are just float very low and a lot of priests quit. Some like this priest pretty much kills himself because he's, he's uh, ideas that aren't practical. But it's a beautiful film though, I mean it's a wonderfully beautiful film, it's a very moving film about a person's beliefs and how it affects them and how it affects other people and the complexity of how what beliefs are. But what belief or lack of belief does to a person and it's not a simplistic like lack of belief will make you stronger or evil or weak. No, it's much more like or what will belief make you strong. No, it's you have to exist within whatever your beliefs are and then work with that. And it's it's, it's aware of how they change in times have affected the soul of the people around them. Like the as they've lost belief, they've lost the tools to handle the problems. But then again, was was the old tools of the old way a way to handle the problems either? 
that's never answered and it's never suggested that the old, older still priests helped much either. It's just like it's a different way to deal with it. So you've seen almost like two different ways of dealing with belief that the the masses or the individual um one to one way of dealing with people. And there's no simple answer to it. There is not and um the, the priests themselves all have their own weird psychological problems. Whether they be being too practical or too impractical and too purist, it's like there's not a one catch all solution to the problems of life when dealing with belief. And that's what the film seems to be about is the complexity of belief within a life and how you deal with it or how you don't deal with it. So it's a wonderful film. I'm really glad to have seen this one again because I've I have seen it a few times, but not for a while, and I've always liked it a lot, but it's always been... It's because I'm really drawn to Pickpocket and Machete and Balthazar and A Man Escaped. This one, for me, is the one that always gets pushed aside slightly, even though it's a terrific film. It's just there's other films there that I'm more drawn to. But I'm really glad to have seen this again because it was so much more satisfying than I remembered it, and it was just such a wonderful film to watch, just the, the act of watching it was so enjoyable and the, all the different revelations, so I'd definitely suggest trying to see this. If you, and I'm not sure it's on Blu-ray yet, but this Region 1 um, Criterion DVD is terrific. It's a great quality print, um, there's a commentary on in a booklet, it's terrific. So I'd highly recommend it. I hope you enjoyed that, I'll be back soon with another video, uh, so I'll see you then.